We haven't looked too much into error handling. We, most of the homework assignments we've been, or all of them really, uh, there has been no concern in uh, handling errors. Um, although when we introduce the notion of contracts, we do establish a way to somehow uh, at least have some protection over errors or invalid inputs. Uh, but now let's think of our, uh, let's go back and to our uh, homework three. Um, and this is the uh, uh, interpreter we had. So it's very simple, uh, a very simple programming language. I mean, it's not really a language, a programming language per se. It's more of an expression language since you can't even uh, have loops or anything like that. So the only thing we have is just numerical expressions that can be evaluated. We have multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. Uh, so now let's think about what would happen if we run um, this code. What do you think would be the output of this? Uh, try to answer this question. Maybe pause the video and when you're done, please resume it. Uh, and there's no better way to figure this out uh, than by running it, right? So if you go ahead and let me make sure everything is commented out. Yes, yeah, so if I run this, I'll get an, an error that says unknown expression. And the reason I get this error is because I have this else case here. So one way I could uh, fix this bug is by adding contracts. I could do add contract, and I could say, well, this thing has to be, an exp has to be uh, an R expression, uh, and it must return um, a number, right? Now, if we run it, we get a contract violation, which is a more um, obvious error. It's expecting an R expression and I'm giving it a, a 10. So that's not good. And that's why we get the error. So here's very clear the boundaries of the error. Uh, the reason that I'm getting it is because um, the caller is not uh, following the contract. And the contract is that the input should be an, ex an R expression, not just any number, but it has to be, a, if it's a number, it needs to be wrapped um, like so. So, second example should pass flawlessly. Okay, and I do get that it is a, a, rent, a number, so I can even do require rec unit, and I can confirm my assumptions by doing check equal saying that this should return 10. Okay, so the fix here, the problem here is that the caller is not passing an AST node, it's passing a number, and this is an error of the caller. So let's look at this example, right? Now, the input is indeed an expression, and if we try to run it, this should be the second expression, what we have is one divided by zero. Um, let's see what happens here. Uh, and if I run it, sorry, if I run it, I get a division by error, uh, by zero error. So this is an internal error of the code. It's not something in the boundaries of the function call. It's really while I'm running it, it just so happens that because the user provide uh, an AST that is dividing by zero, the whole thing is breaking. Um, so the question may be, is this a user error or is this an implementation error? It really depends on how, how you uh, think about this particular error. So does the error mean that it's, um, you know, it's something that the user is not meeting, it's not uh, meeting the contract, or is this an implementation error that uh, the interpreter should be looking ahead and say, hey, you threw this error, I want to wrap it. Uh, because you might, you might want to be very careful when you just simply let the program crash. Like in this case, the user has an error, an expression that is not defined, and uh, by just throwing it out there, you're actually you're sharing a bit of the under um, the implementation details of your code. So you usually, when you have these kinds of errors, you want to protect them and somehow uh, give them a, a user. Uh, cleanup so that the mistake becomes a bit more obvious. So in this case, we know that it's a division by zero, but maybe it would be nice to know 
what is causing that division by zero. Um, so in this case, um, implementation errors should be loud. So if this is an error on our part, we should be able to find them during testing. Uh, and that's why, for instance, the contracts are nice and all that. Um, so, yeah, in the end, if we assume that this is an implementation error, we need to somehow notify the user of the error and hide our implementation details. So how can we do this? Well, one way we can, um, can have a way to return uh, that whenever something is going to be a division by zero, you proactively act upon it and return something else. So we could um, implement a safe division that returns a special value and lets the user know when that value is not valid, right? So in, in true Racket uh, tradition, we could just return a false. Um, so let's try to do that. So one way is by implementing a safe division. So let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna write it here. Safe division takes x by x. So if y is zero, uh, then I return false. Otherwise, I just do the division as is. Now I have to change my built-in to return instead of the division. I want to return safe div. Okay, so now let's see what happens uh, when I run my code. Um, oh, now something queer interesting happens. It's saying that my implementation broke my, my Arival XP broke its own contract. So here I'm saying it's expecting a number, but instead it got a false. Okay. So we kind of need to change the, the interface to become a bit more uh, expressive. So we want to say it either returns number or false. So let's say that. Okay. And now indeed, because the expression is invalid, we now have a false. And this is nicer. In a way, we can tell, we can let the user know whenever there's a division by zero, the evaluated value is going to be false. Okay, so let's see. So we should be happy with this. Um, I wonder if this is enough, though. Let's think about this case. Let's see where it is. There, here it is. So the case is where you have a nested division. So you have one divided by zero plus two. And if you think about it, the problem here is that this sub expression becomes false, right? And then what you have, you're going to have plus false two, right? And of course you cannot add false and two together. If you do that, you get false and two. you get this error. Actually, let me do a check equal. Can make sure that the thing above is correct. Check equal. Okay, just fixing the test case. Okay, now here what I get if I call false and two together, it's saying that I didn't call, I didn't use the addition correctly. So it's expecting a number and I give it false. Uh, so this is not fine. Uh, let's see if that's what happens when I run this. Yes, and indeed that's what it happens. You see, uh, that's what happens. You see a plus expecting a number and I gave it a false. And the reason is because of this evaluation, right? So we haven't handled that. So let's try to fix it. The problem it happens here because recursively um, the first parameter, this is going to be evaluated to plus, right? This whole thing. So let's say that this becomes a plus and this becomes false, right? And then this becomes a two. So it's kind of, 
it's not very nice, right? So we want to be able to handle the case where when we once we evaluate something, it may become false. And if that's the case, maybe we want to handle that uh, erroneous case directly. So let's see how we could do this. Um, well, we could add a conditional, right? Uh, maybe we even add, I mean, there are multiple ways of doing it. Uh, you could ignore, convert a false into a zero, uh, but that's kind of ugly, right? It, it kind of would produce weird results. So instead, let's propagate the error. So uh, define left-hand side to be this. Let's define the right-hand side. To be this. Okay. Now what I want to do is the left-hand side is false then I want to return false. Otherwise, I want to call left hand side, right hand side, some parentheses missing. It's fine. This is fine. Oops. Ah, I forgot the else. So if uh, the thing is false, then return false and close this branch. Otherwise, uh, call the function with left inside. And right hand side. Now I'm going to close this conditional. I'm going to align this. And I also want to close this branch. So now let's see if this works. Ah, great, it works. So this is, uh, we handled this first case, but you know, you could also have an error on the left hand side, right? So we could potentially uh, do the same conditional, or we could even do a flat thing, but you'll see why I would just want to repeat the pattern. So another thing we could do is now we want to check if the right hand side is false. And if the right hand side is false, I want to terminate. Otherwise, I want to do this. Okay, and now I can handle the case where both the left hand side or the right hand side uh, could have a division by zero. And I can confirm this by flipping around uh, this perimeter, right? So if I move this and I reverse its order, right now I have two divided by, by uh, one divided by zero, and I should still see a, a false. And I do see a false. So that's great. Check equal. And confirm that my fix is done. No, no changes. And this is basically what you'll see here. So uh, what we could do is we take the first argument, and then we check if the first argument is false. And if it is, we just return false. Otherwise, we take the second argument, and we evaluate it, and we check if that is false. And if it's uh, false, we return that. And finally, we uh, compute the whole thing. Uh, but you know, you might even have an error in um, your function. So if you want to, you could even generalize this. Because if a function is not defined, you could also return false here. So we could also do that. Uh, actually, let me do just make it clo closer to the um, to the slide. Okay, now here I want to do a cond. 
So if the function is false, then return to false. Other, otherwise, do all this. Yeah. Um, and then close this conditional, and then close this branch. Okay. And now we can try uh, evaluating modulo. If we evaluate modulo, now it should return false as well. So it's not crashing. Okay. Good. So we checked all of this. We have a few examples. So now I have a bit more robust interpreter that uh, a, a robust that is a bit more uh, an interpreter that is a bit more robust. And it can handle a case where the function is not uh, is unknown. It can also graciously handle the case where the left hand side uh, evaluation returns false and the right hand side evaluation returns false. Uh, and finally, only when everything is ready, you want to return this. But as you may one quickly see, this is horrible to look at, right? Very um, ugly. Uh, and that is usually the case when you're doing error, error tracking manually, right? So what it would be nice perhaps to have is either some kind of exception or a nicer, higher order way of reasoning about erroneous uh, behavior. Uh, so let's try to design an error uh, handling API in our next video.